All right. Let's pick up where I left off. All right. I said that. Annie speaks. I understand. She looked down for the moment she needed to hide the full extent of her disappointment. Will he ever tell me he loves me? Again, Annie, you can't tell me. I can only offer you this. Let things happen as they will. If you try to force these issues, they'll never turn out satisfactorily. And you don't want that. Deanna patted Annie's hand. I can offer one bit of advice. Annie's mood instantly picked up. Yes, Professor? Should Carrie ask you to do something, particularly in the next five minutes, say yes. She squeezed the girl's hand before standing. I think I better check up on my shield maidens and make certain Erwin and Helena haven't abused them too badly. She offered Annie a pleasant smile. If I don't speak with you again tonight, have a good rest of the evening, and please offer the same to Carrie. I will, Professor. She returned Deanna's smile. Have a good evening, Deanna. Thank you, Annie. Deanna walked off into the milling crowd. Annie wondered what Deanna meant with her advice. What would Carrie ask her? To take a walk? To go somewhere private and talk? To... You... She's thinking here. You shouldn't think about it. Stop thinking. She sat back, brushed a few curls from her face, and looked up at the spot looked up at a spot on the wall before her, thinking again. The more you wonder about what might happen, the more you'll find yourself disappointed if whatever you're imagining doesn't turn out as you expect. Whoa Somebody oriented the picture. She found Carrie standing in front of the sofa and next to her. He didn't look as tired as his exclamation indicated, and she wondered if he'd only tried to get her attention. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just... Carrie stretched, arching his back slightly. Got a little too energetic out there. Where's Emma? Carrie shrugged. I think she ran off to watch her coven's team beat up on the Asgardia fight team. He took a deep breath. Let's dance. Annie chuckled. You just got off the dance floor. Yeah, but not with you. He held out his hand. Come on. Annie immediately remembered Deanna's advice. Should Carrie ask you to do something, particularly in the next five minutes, say yes. She didn't say what was going to happen if she said yes, only that something would. Annie thinking here and she wouldn't have given me that advice unless it was something special. Stop thinking. She held out her right hand. Yes, of course. She allowed Carrie to pull her onto her feet. Lead on. They were almost to the dance floor when the music ended. Carrie stopped at the edge and looked about. I guess they're going to start the next song. Annie was unconcerned. She didn't know or care what played next as long as she was dancing with Carrie. It was all that mattered. Good evening, everyone. Annie saw Professor Slayton standing at the front of the dance floor, having appeared as if from out of nowhere. She noticed Professor Arrakis standing, fading into the background, and figured both had teleported into place moments before. I hope all of you are enjoying the festivities, and that none of you are engaging in activities that will land you in detention for most of the month of November. A few students tried to look as if they already if they'd already been told they might be headed for November detention. I'd like to clear this front section of the dance floor because something special is about to happen. We have a dedication. There were murmurs among the students as this was something not usually done, not among a confined group of tweens and teens. Any watched the floor cleared while Irwin continued. This comes from a member of the Cyrnos Coven. And it goes out to another member of the same couple. The dedication reads, Annie, if you're ever lost on the moors, call my name and I'll find you. The professor's eyes locked with Annie's. Love, Carrie. A number of seconds passed as Annie carefully fathomed 
what was said, not just to her, but to every student and every instructor in the hall. She'd heard her name, heard something about Moors, about getting lost and calling out a name. She turned to her right and found Kerry there, a slight grin upon his face. And as Irwin finished the dedication, Annie vaguely sensed the professor pointing at them. Okay, you two, get out there. This is your dance. Kerry took one step onto the dance floor before turning and extending his hand. Join me, Annie? Annie wasn't acting consciously. Her body was moving without instructions from her mind. As she walked onto the dance floor, she wasn't aware of anyone else in the room. She felt herself moving. She felt herself stop before Carrie. She sensed him holding her right hand slightly away from their bodies as he wrapped his other arm around her waist and pulled her close. There was a tinkling of piano keys, and Carrie began dancing as a woman's voice, strong and sensual, filled the hall. Annie heard something about wild, windy moors, about tempers and jealousy, about hate and love, possession and greed, bad dreams, and weathering heights. They didn't stay in one spot and move back and forth. Carrie did his amateuristic best to lead them across the floor, and Annie followed as best she could, never trying to change direction or motion, content to move with Carrie as he moved. She leaned into him, feeling him breathe as they danced as one body. When she heard the singer say she was Kathy and she was cold, Annie finally found the need to speak. What is this song? Carrie slowly spun them in one spot. Wuthering Heights by Kate Bush. He leaned back slightly so he could see her face. It's the original song, but she redid the vocal. Shh, you. She closed her eyes and laid her head upon his shoulder as the music enveloped her. She's thinking. Even at his most romantic, he has to bring forth some arcane trivia. It makes me love him even more. Stop thinking. She embraced every audio sensation as the song segued from the heartfelt vocals to a rising orchestration backing a single crying guitar. Annie held on to Carrie tightly, his head swimming with images of them together from times past, here at the school and beyond that, into the misty moors that were the memories of her dreams. Carrie lightly pressed his head against hers and spoke in a whisper. It's okay if you get faint like you did before. I'll catch you before you fall. Annie slowly opened her eyes and brushed her lips across Carrie's cheek. You have already, my love. You have. That's the end of the scene.